Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and we're going to take a first hands look at iOS 8. iOS 8 was announced at WWDC 2014, and we've got our first hand look at it. So you can see here, it doesn't look much different really, and we have a bunch of new features that really will help and should have been there before, but are there now. So let's first start with Photos. Photos doesn't look too different, but what you can see is it tells where they're located, nothing new there but we have better search of photos. So if we tap on the little search here, we've got nearby, May 2014, or Oakmont, near where I live. We also have better editing of photos. So let me pick this photo. This is downtown Pittsburgh, and it looks pretty nice, but we have some options with it. So we'll tap on the photo. We can look at it, obviously. Tap on this little button here, and we have a bunch of different options. We can save it to the camera roll, assign to contact, more. We've got all these different options. But let's save it to the camera roll so we can go back and actually edit it. So we'll go to Albums, Recently Added. And right here you can see the photo and we'll go to Edit. Now under Edit, you can see I brought that over from the cloud and now Apple's going to allow us to have all of our photos in the cloud. But you can see we have some different options. We've got Crop. We've got a bunch of different things we can do as far as turn it how we want. We can quickly rotate the photo. We have some different options here to change the size. And they've added a bunch of other features as well, light and color and some filters. And they've just made it a little easier to edit in the phone itself. They've also given filters from other apps, so now apps can interact with these apps, which is a great addition. And we also have the option to create time-lapse photos. So a time-lapse photo is a photo that allows you to take photos over time to see things change, so frame after frame over time. So if I started this, I can just leave it, and it will take photos and create a time-lapse video over time. One of the other updates was Messages. Messages got a good amount of updates, and you can see here's just a conversation uh, with someone, and we have Messages, nothing there really, but we can add photos or videos, and we can take multiple photos or videos and add them to the, the message and send them. We can also do a quick voice memo. We just tap right here, tap and hold, and it crashed. Now this is a beta, so you're, gonna, you're going to find some of that. So we'll open it back up. And you can see I'm recording a voice memo right now. And then I can just send it or cancel it. So really nice addition. You can do the same with photos or videos, as you can see here. And we'll cancel that as well. In addition, we can send different things regarding our location. We can do details and let them know our specific location and where we're at specifically where they're at, send my current location, do not disturb. There's some attachments, all the different attachments he sent me in different, uh, different messages throughout the year, basically. And then we can do do not disturb, so new, mute notifications for this conversation. So some really nice additional options. Now, one of the things they've done is you can respond via notifications. So we've got our notifications here. We might get a notification and we can respond directly from the notification. Now I don't have any here to really show you other than the bug reporter. We can dismiss it right from here. So that's a really nice addition as well. We can also see our most recent people we've talked to by double tapping going to our task manager and you can see them across the top there. We can tap on them quickly and get some information. We can mobile, send a mobile call rather, uh, call via iPhone, message, FaceTime, you see, you get the idea. In mail, we've had some updates as well. If we go into mail, you'll see here's our updates. If we slide slowly, we've got some different options this time. Instead of just trash, we've got more and flag. If we go to more, we've got all these different additions right here. So some nice quick little updates as well. They've also updated Safari to be a little bit different. Open it here and we can see all our tabs. Obviously, we can swipe off just like we could before but we have some additions as far as seeing what we've had recently, just like our Mac. So that's really nice as well. Request desktop site, and we can go to the desktop site of a website as well. Something really nice to have. Now the keyboard is something that is really been updated. You can see we have suggestions. So I've got quick replies, yes, no, okay. Uh, we can do a quick memo, like I said before, or say hello, how, are you. We can finish it like that. So something other 
different phones have had before Android and Windows Phone, but now they've finally added it to iOS, and it also allows support of third-party third keyboards, which is a great, great thing. So now maybe you don't like this keyboard, you want a swipe keyboard, someone can make that from swipe, you can download the keyboard and actually use it like you could on the other devices. So definitely a nice addition. One of the additions is family sharing. Now this is something I've been looking forward to. You go into your settings, into iCloud, and set up family sharing. And you can see family sharing get started, and you can share purchased music, movies, books, and eligible apps. And basically you can share up to six or with six people with the same credit card information and all of this stuff you can share. It's really a nice update. You can also limit your kids. So if you have kids and they want to purchase an app and they're on the same shared account, it'll actually prompt the owner of the account and allow them to actually allow or disallow them installing and buying that app. So it's a really nice little feature as well. Apple has added a health app. That's something we've all been expecting and you can see there's health and here's all the different things. There's all activity count, things that basically will work with a device or can work with some of these sensors within the iPhone, but maybe this points to an iWatch. I'm not really sure, but it kind of looks like it here. One of the apps I wasn't able to see yet is iCloud Drive. That allows us to actually finally access our files and folders from an iPhone, iPad, Mac, and even Windows. And it's basically a file browser for all your different devices. There isn't a separate app, at least not yet, and they have changed the store a little bit, allowed people to add previews, and there's some explore options as well. Now there are some really neat things they've done with tethering on the Mac when OS 10 Yosemite comes out, and basically you can quickly turn on your wireless hotspot. You can also answer phone calls between devices now, so if you have a Mac and you have that, uh, when it comes out, you'll be able to answer there. You can also hand off an app here. So say I'm writing a note here, I want to write a long note, I can hand it off to my Mac and pick it up there. And that'll be interesting to see how that works once Yosemite is out. But otherwise, it looks pretty, pretty similar. This is the wallpaper that it has, or any others. There is some neat things within settings, but uh, that's pretty much it. There will be more things revealed over time, I'm sure, and maybe some more fixes, but that's what Apple showed off and basically what you're kind of allowed to, to show according to what they've already shown. I'd love to hear what you have to say about iOS 8. Some great updates, and they've really refined iOS 7 into iOS 8, and it seems to be a a great update and a needed update. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Will you be updating when it comes out? If not, why not? If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.